Good morning, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Welcome to Calvary Moravian Church on this wonderful Easter morning. Um, we have some sunshine and it's almost 50 degrees, so it's a good Easter, right? We'll make it work. Um, we're glad that you chose Calvary to worship with us on this Easter. And if you're choosing to watch us uh, via Facebook or YouTube, we welcome you as well. Um, for the sake of, if you're wondering why I'm here, I'm gonna make it up there, but it's gonna be a little easier for me to do some of the things out here for now. Um, let me share a few things with you before we get started with our worship this morning. Um, and first of all, wow, I was just gonna thank you for singing, but. Uh, <laughs> First of all, <laughs> you know, I was going to thank the choir for being here, but now I'm just going <laughs> to, it's all right. <laughs> okay, you're all good. All right. So th <laughs> thank you to our choir for being here. It's wonderful to have you, I think. And thank you again to Ann for directing our special music and for being our organist um, this morning. Um, we're thanking all of those who've donated lilies in honor or memory of individuals. Um, those are printed on the purple or lilac insert inside of your bulletin. Um, you're welcome after the service to take your lily or lilies home or share that with somebody that you know could use a lily. Um, we'd love to, to share them with others. So again, within your bulletin, you see a lot of information about what's happening in our church family. Of course, we welcome you back to worship any Sunday at 1045. Uh, we remind you that we do sell, continue to sell giant gift cards, and those help to um, fund our ministries. We get 5% of those um, that are sold, and Karen would be happy to see you after the service in the conference room. Uh, there's two really exciting events that I just wanted to highlight that are coming up. The first is next Saturday. Um, it's been a long time since we've partnered with our um, local homeless transitional shelter for families called the Sixth Street Shelter. And we'll be over there on Saturday morning, next Saturday morning around nine o'clock. Um, we'd welcome you to come help clean up, help restock, um, do some other in inside jobs that they have for us. So that's gonna be next Saturday, the 23rd. And then in not next Thursday, but the Thursday after, we are very excited, and he's here today. Um, Dan Benedict's band, the Benny Band, will be with us. Uh, they help, they use our space on Thursday evenings often to practice, and uh, they graciously have donated their time and their talents to, uh, for a benefit concert for Ukrainian refugee relief. So on April 28th, that's a Thursday night, um, you can stop in any time between seven and nine, and we'd welcome you to enjoy the music of the Benny Band, enjoy some refreshments, um, and just be together. And all good free will offerings will go to Ukrainian re refugee relief, um, supporting our border world mission work. Uh, I believe Dan in the back has a, a little sign-up sheet for uh, desserts. So if you'd like to bring a dessert to sell, to offer to others, um, that would be wonderful. So. Again, thank you for putting this all together and we're excited, so thanks. So those are my, my brief announcements. Um, again, as we uh, gather together, we hear the words of our watchword for the week from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here, but has risen. Let us worship God together. Thank you. 
We pray together our Easter liturgy, page 90 in our hymnal. Let us stand. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Sing this aloud. Proclaim it to the ends of the earth. The Lord has set his people free. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By God's great mercy, we are given new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Praise, Praise honor, glory, and power to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Jesus was handed over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Then what can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or hardship, can persecution, hunger, nakedness, peril, or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. For we are convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. may be seated. We have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, it is for the Lord that we live, and if we die, it is for the Lord that we die. 
So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For Christ died, rose from death, and lives again in order to be Lord of the living and of the dead. We do not want you to be in any doubt about those who have died or to grieve over them as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. What we are saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. What is sown as perishable is raised imperishable. What is sown in dishonor is raised in glory. What is sown in weakness is raised in power. What is sown a physical body is raised a spiritual body. Then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Please stand. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are of the earth. For we have died, and our lives are hidden with Christ in God. God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, Make us complete in everything good, so that we may do your will, working among us all that is pleasing in your sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. May be seated. Amen. So 
So just the word that we continue as we're, you probably noticed some changes, we're transitioning back into um, some of our previous practices of, of taking offering of, of greeters. And we continue to collect our joyful noise in the back of the church um, this month, just to mention, <coughs> excuse me, the, month, the joyful noise is being donated to our Good Samaritan Fund. Um, so each week we collect loose change or dollars um, to offset uh, one of our causes. Uh, again, the Good Samaritan Fund helps to fund uh, both individuals within the church or outside of the church that might be in need. And so often it's a giant gift card or a way that we could help uh, another person in need. And in the month of April, we are collecting for that fund. Um, now I'd like to welcome our ushers to um, come forward. We'll be sharing in the presentation of our offerings. And again, we are grateful for the ways that you help to support our ministries in worship, education, and outreach that we try to do here at Calvary. So again, my thanks. As we receive our offerings, I'd invite you to stand and sing together our offertory, um, hymn number 819. Christ Jesus, we have no words for the amount of gratitude we have for your life, for the gift of hope, for the gift of joy. Remind us that even as we give what we can, that we are called upon to give our life in the ways that we can share your love, your joy, and your hope with all of those whom we meet. Thank you for these gifts presented today to the ministry of Calvary. Help us to use them to do your will and share your love. We pray in your name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Again, 
We are glad that we can be together, especially on Easter, um, and we are glad that we can be a community that cares for each other. Um, we try to do that in many ways, but one of the ways is through prayer um, and pausing in a time in our worship to see if there are ways that we can celebrate with you or pray for you or pray for others um, in your family or in our greater world. So if there are prayer requests, um, we'd be happy to, to hear them at this point. prayers for Lauren um, in the hospital right now with some effects of Lyme disease and um, we'll keep her in our prayers. Thank you. Any others? prayers offered by Alma for granddaughter Cora um, graduating in two weeks and uh, the future I think that goes without saying it's going to be graduation season soon for many and um, wishing those a new hope so. Steph? Prayers for Diane, uh, recently diagnosed with lung cancer and the treatments. Thank you. Oh, I should turn. Christian? Sorry, you were blocked by Lily. I was just going to say prayers for the people of Ukraine um, who have to continue to endure this unbearable tragedy and assault on uh, freedom and democracy. Thank you. And more and more we're seeing uh, results. So prayers for the people of Ukraine and prayers for um, all of those who are being drafted into something they had no idea where they were going in, in Russia and, and, and elsewhere. So um, we know it's hard to find uh, justice in, in these, these times. Um, Alma? So for the personal connection of your exchange student, Chris, uh, child, Christina, and um, for safe travels and, and being able to be here, prayers. I did think um, today would be appropriate as we stand and pause in celebrating um, hope and new life to just pause for a moment as we speak of Ukraine um, to think and to offer just a moment of silence and our prayers um, for all of those involved and prayers for peace. So let us pause. Amen. Any other prayer requests? Sorry. <laughs> okay. 
All right. If oh, sorry, Karen. Yes. Just Yes, thank you. Yes, we're very grateful. I was going to say we, we've sort of we learned how to do some things uh, over the last two years, and one of the, the blessings is to have the choir back in, um, in some capacities. Um, I was thinking that on Thursday night I was singing so much better, but I think it's because the choir was here. So, um, but thank you for <laughs> keeping me company. <laughs> oh. All right. Let's pause for a moment of prayer. <clears> the <throat> holy God, we bring the prayers that were shared and the prayers within our hearts before you. You know when we have the sighs too deep for words, how to be a presence of strength and peace within our hearts. Lord, we come in a world that is filled with moments of, of conflict, personal conflict, the rise of mental health concerns, the ways that we seem to turn to distrust each other. We know that the world is filled around us in our areas in this country and certainly in places like the Ukraine and elsewhere with the moments and places of violence. And God, we pray for peace in these regions. In this world, you have given us so much potential. So help us on this Easter Sunday to live out the good news, the news of your kingdom that might come in a glimpse here, the news of your hope that might be shared within our lives, the news that we can do something, each of us, to share your love. So fill us with that good news as we pray together and worship together and then go out into our Easter Mondays and live that good news. Again, grateful for the gift of your son who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I will be reading from the Gospel of Luke today on page 860 in the Pew Bible, if you'd like to follow along. Chapter 24, verses 1 through 12, the resurrection of Jesus. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you when he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered these words. And returning to the, from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and then he went home amazed at what had happened.
it's a new dance. <laughs> it's called <laughs> how to get past the choir. They could really be mean to me if they wanted to and not let me in, but I would shorten the service and well, yes. <laughs> Okay, it's like altitude sickness up here. Okay. <clears throat> so, with a raise of hands, I want to know how many of you celebrate April Fool's Day? All right, good. Good, all right. Not. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's good reason. <laughs> April Fool's Day. If you had grown up in my family, you would have definitely celebrated April Fool's Day. So, you know, I described someone to someone the other day that, you know, my family enjoyed the normal holidays, of course, Easter, Christmas, Halloween. Um, but I think we also celebrated, and I'm going to say a little more than others, uh, what I call the minor holidays. Um, so that's Groundhog's Day, Fashnak Day, which you can know as Mardi, uh, Mardi Gras or Fat Tuesday, but really it's Fashnak Day, um, and April Fool's Day. Um, some of that has carried over to my adult practices as well, and I am guilty, as Sophie knows, of turning into the live stream now of Poxitani Phil, out in Poxitani, Pennsylvania, which you can watch for hours on end um, early in the morning on Groundhog's Day. And uh, I just wanted to put a word out to Phil that while you predicted the six more weeks of winter, I think we are now ready uh, for spring. But April Fool's Day, back to April Fool's Day. April Fool's Day was and is celebrated in my family. So. This year, when um, Sophie was actually off from school and uh, on a, a trip w with my parents, so I got a few texts this April Fool's Day. I believe one was, they found a cat. Can they keep it? <laughs> so I got a few more. Now, after 40 plus years of this, um, I've gotten a little savvy and I said something like, sure, you can keep the cat and happy <laughs> April Fool's Day. Um, I think when we know, and I know at least now, after again being part of this family, when to recognize what we might call idle tales or nonsense or something made up. Um, at least I can recognize that on April Fool's Day when I have a little bit of a warning and know about it. But what happens when we hear news? Something good but unbelievable, amazing, out of this world, and a little bit scary at the same time. Now, I don't think that the first century Palestine were celebrating April Fool's Day, or that had made it into the popular culture of first century um, Palestine. And so today's Easter scripture reading could not be dismissed as some kind of street savvy disciples of Jesus saying, you're not gonna get me with a story like this, right? In Luke's gospel, and it's interesting, in Luke's telling of the Easter story, there is no physical presence of Jesus. So there is no Jesus appearance to the disciples in this account, right? Um, there's no one that's coming to Mary that she's thinking is a gardener or so forth. There are only stories that are told. Um, the first story that is told to the woman these are the women who have never left Jesus' side, who have been with him through this walk into Jerusalem, who have stood by the cross as he is crucified, who have watched, who have prepared these ointments, these spices for burial. Um, they are now seeking to prepare his body. But there is no body, and there is only a story. Uh, two men in white, perhaps angels we often say, say to them, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. And they, and there's two words that describe them, they are perplexed and they are terrified. And so the choices before them when they are perplexed and terrified and hear this unbelievably good and terrifying and joyful and amazing news, there's, there's two things they can do. They can be paralyzed in this news. They could go home, they could make a pact among themselves, you know, no one's gonna believe us, this seems crazy, let's just not say anything. They could dismiss it as a cruel joke, 
a prank. Or they could share the good news. They could live into the moment. They could be willing to believe for a moment and live into it and see what possibilities it would bring for them, for their others' lives that they're, they're about to see. And we know, of course, that they chose the latter option. They chose not to dismiss it as some kind of joke or ignore it or be paralyzed by it, but to, to share, to share the good news. And so the women do that. They do that to Jesus' disciples, the 11 that they find. Um, it seems natural they'd want to go and share this news, this unbelievably good news to them. And what do they say? April Fools? You won't get us? <laughs> what they say are these words in verse 11, but these words seem to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. So uh, that word, idle tale, was, was curious to me, and uh, scholars have written about this, verse 11 in chapter 24. And it was interesting, as we did a Bible study on this this week, uh, we have a regular Tuesday morning Bible study, we looked and we heard that even within the different versions that folks were using, that this word idle tale was different in different versions. Some of the translations were pure nonsense. Um, others I read had, the women were making it up. Um, some noted about, you know, this is an interesting setup between the male disciples kind of dismissing all of these women coming, which is kind of, all right, ah, woman, uh, or saying something like that. So you can hear all those underlying phrases in this passage. Now, theologian Anna Carter Florence argues that the translators, the versions that we hear of verse 11, have actually sanitized it quite a good deal. And that this word, idle uh, tales, or pure nonsense, which doesn't appear in other places in the gospel, is a little bit harsher than what this translation might suggest. She translates it as pure garbage or drivel, or, and then there's a word I can't say in church. Okay, you know what it is though? Okay, good. So that's how she's translating this idle tales and what the disciples are thinking about this. So, <coughs> Now, verse 12, uh, comes. Peter comes in, and it's interesting as well in our Bible study, we found out that some manuscripts don't even have this verse. It seems like this was kind of a one that they found in some places, and some places they didn't find this verse. So sometimes there's arguments, did Peter even come in, or was this just the dismissal um, right then of, we don't believe, move on. Um, that's an interesting point as well. So they were dismissed, the women were dismissed, the good news was dismissed, this incredible news, and it was not shared. And if you're like me, and maybe you, you're, you're kind of getting a little bit savvy to some news that seems too good to be true, or maybe you're, you're thinking, I need to really check the credentials on this news, is it, is it real, is it fake? Uh, we hear that a lot. Um, maybe we find some sympathy for these male disciples, right? The resurrection is hard to believe. It turns the world upside down. And it challenges what we can count on, what we often want to count on. Um, we shouldn't pretend it's easy to believe, but it can be hard to believe good news, especially this good news, but it can be hard to believe any good news, um, any joyful news, even if it's for a moment. So this is kind of what I was thinking of all week, of what does it take to believe good news, to receive good news, hopeful news, joyful possibilities, embrace it and live with it and explore it for a moment. Now, this is important. We cannot tie good news, the good news that these men in white brought, the good news that the women share, this good news, to good news that will last forever. The two men in white don't promise that Jesus is risen and will be with them forever, till the end of time, and never gonna leave their sides. We know that in 40 short days, the living earthly presence of Jesus um, that will be with his disciples and others in these short moments, appearance moments, 
um, the road to Emmaus, along the seashore and so forth, that earthly presence will be gone. Jesus will ascend, we'll be celebrating Ascension Sunday, um, and that's, that's that. So how do we live though, not with good news that we, we need to firm down and staple it to ourselves, but good news just for this moment, just for now. And it seems like the women could do this, even though they were terrified and perplexed, uh, they didn't shut themselves down. They weren't willing to shut down and not share it. They were willing to be present even if the good news was just for that moment. The disciples of Jesus though, of course, do not. Um, and um, even though, again, this was coming from women that had known Jesus all the way since chapter eight, when we first hear about Mary Magdalene and Joanna, um, they had been with Jesus, healed by him, walking with him. So really the question for us today might be, why is it so hard uh, to believe good news? To cultivate joy in the moment, to be fully present in a moment of joy. Um, why is it so hard to not let go of the fear that says, but it won't stay, it can't stay, it's not true. Something else is gonna happen that's gonna be really bad. And if I get myself up here, ugh, then I'll be down here. Throughout our, our midweek Lenten programs, we were working with the concept of letting go and cultivating, um, and we used that theme. And if you were here for several Sundays or the Wednesdays, you re might remember that we worked with some modern versions of this concept of letting go and cultivating in, in what we called 10 guideposts. Um, and they were all around, um, again, these parallels, what do we need to let go of and what can we cultivate in our lives? This was taken from the author um, Brene, Brene Brown. She's written a book called The Guidepost to, or, I'm sorry, The Gifts of Imperfection. And she works with all 10 of these different guideposts and they're very modern so they kind of remind us of things that we might struggle with to let go or things that we could maybe then cultivate in our lives. So one of the guideposts that I've been thinking about ever since reading this passage is the, the letting go issue that we have with accepting good news. Um, and as Brene Brown writes about it, she says, it's the issue of foreboding joy is what she calls it. So foreboding joy. She says, imagine you're working, you're watching a movie, right? It's a movie that has this beautiful scene. It's a family, it's enjoying a drive, they're joyful and smiling. And then somewhere along the lines in your head, you're thinking, yeah, but something bad's gonna happen, All right? Somebody's gonna, there's gonna be a chainsaw that's gonna jump out, you might think, or you might think something that's gonna happen. This can't stay like this forever. Um, we won't go into scenarios, but it's that fear that when something good is happening, the other shoe is gonna drop, she says. So what's the practice, she asks, that can help us to cultivate the ability to welcome in the good news, even when it's not permanent? To accept that moment of joy, possibility, opportunity. And she says, through a practice of gratitude, a lifestyle of gratefulness is when so it's hard work, we can't just say we're gonna just do it, but adapting a sort of practice of gratitude, of being grateful for the small moments, we can then, when the opportunities come to experience joy, be with it fully, even though it's impermanent. So part of our Lenten experiences we talked about were the ways that we practice cultivating calm and confidence and hope. Um, we discussed different practices like yoga and mindfulness and things that allow us to be in the moment. Um, and I think, I'm not saying that the, the woman gathered at the tomb did, did these practices, but somehow they were able to be present and cultivate awareness and even a bit of joy um, in accepting this good news, or at least being able to share this good news. So we are, we are people that are called to cultivate joy, to practice this ability, even when we might be a little terrified and perplexed by it ourselves. And I think we can do that. We are, we are capable of more than green grumblers, than being pessimist, than um, leading ourselves to where is the next shoe gonna drop. 
We are capable of this, of hope and joy and even resurrection. And I thought of one just moment of resurrection that I saw in the news this week, and it was a Washington Post headline. Uh, it caught my attention. And the headline said this, beside a Ukrainian checkpoint, the couple demonstrated that even in war, life and love must go on. And the article detailed about how a bride and groom who were civilians before the Russian invasion were called again to the front line, but they had been engaged and were hoping to plan a ceremony soon. And they decided that even as they were on the front line, and the pictures are, are amazing as they're dressed in their fatigues, um, that they would celebrate their marriage, um, that they would, they found a, a, Rush, a um, Ukrainian priest among the military um, officers, and that they would celebrate uh, that even in when the bad news was around them, there was love, the article says, and it was to be celebrated and embraced at a time like this. So that's one moment of cultivating and being able to say yes to good news. Um, so that's the question for us today. Is Jesus really risen in our lives? Are the possibilities of new opportunities that come to us, of good news possibilities, given some thought? Or are they automatically just kind of saying, ah, but I could do this, but this, but this. Are we, even if it's fleeting, able <clears throat> to practice gratitude, the cultivation of joy, taking it on and sharing it like the woman did with another. <clears throat> and even if you're not believed, even if others think that's just an idle tale and they might say the war is still going on or they might challenge what you're saying to them, even if you aren't believed, are you able to still share resurrection moments with each other? So are we able to say we are not looking among the dead, but among the living for new life. And to say that this is not an idle tale, but an opportunity for new life. Amen. We're gonna share in our closing hymn, our hymn of proclamation that Jesus Christ is risen today. We'll sing all four verses of hymn number 358. Please stand.
He is not here, but he is risen. Allow the risen Christ to live on in your love, in your life, and go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.